As always, viewer discretion is advised. Sophie St. Jacques' excitement plummeted as she slid down the water slide at the aqua park, turning into a desperate scream as she was thrown off the float. Rolling uncontrollably, she painfully collided with its rigid walls. Suddenly, she was sucked into a closed water tube, leaving her husband uncertain about her well-being for several agonizing seconds. Did she manage to hold her breath to conquer that part of the slide? Would she emerge unharmed or possibly break a leg, limping for the rest of her life? Could she hit her head, lose consciousness, and drown in the pool? Just how deadly can water parks be? If you're curious about how the summer of 2023 unfolded in water parks, brace yourself. In Omaha, USA, a six-year-old boy lost his life. In Turkey, a tourist died on a five-star hotel's water slide. In France, a father died in front of his daughter as their inflatable castle was blown away by the wind. Two more fatal incidents occurred in the United Kingdom. Are water parks genuinely this perilous? Or are these just unfortunate incidents happening everywhere? Indeed, water slide injuries can happen, much like on a regular beach, ranging from minor scrapes to bruises. Yet serious injuries can occur unexpectedly, as was the case at the Texas water park, Hawaiian Falls, with Lauro Casterjohn. On a Sunday morning in the summer of 2015, after attending church, he, along with his wife and grandson, headed to the aqua park. Laro enjoyed water slides until he decided to ride the aqua tube, a closed slide with several sharp turns. Laro jumped into the tube, joyfully sliding for a few meters until he realized his body was no longer gliding. He understood there was no water around to aid the slide. He was stuck in the narrow tube, shrouded in darkness and could barely move. The only relief was that he wasn't claustrophobic. Trying to free himself, Laro was helpless, forced to wait for help. Suddenly, he heard water splashes and screams from above. Fear struck him. The park staff had allowed the next visitor to descend. Within seconds, he felt a strong impact and lost consciousness. He woke up at the pool's bottom, pulled out by a stranger shouting, I almost killed you. The visitor who collided with Laro was terrified, but thankfully uninjured. In the hospital, Laro was diagnosed with injuries to his shoulder, head, spine, and legs. The water park administration claimed adherence to all rules, labeling it as a tragic accident. As compensation, they offered Laro three free tickets to the aqua park. Furthermore, Hawaiian Falls representatives urged Laro not to sue, reminding him of his non-US citizenship. In the process of obtaining citizenship, outraged Laro sought legal assistance Ultimately, Hawaiian Falls was found negligent, and they compensated Laro with $100,000, 12,000 of which covered medical expenses. Water park rides often turn into wild rides for all the wrong reasons, mainly because they don't offer enough protection for thrill seekers. Take, for instance, the glass water slide in the Chinese city of Tonglu. People zoom down on inflatable rafts through a see-through chute, hanging just about four meters above the treetops. Now, on the last Saturday of September, 2023, a kid, eagerly anticipating the ride with their mom, had their excitement cut short. As their raft twisted on the next turn, it flipped. The terrified mom grabbed the child, desperately searching for a safe spot to exit the track. But before she could realize there was nowhere to hide, another raft knocked them off their feet. Stuck on its nose, pressed by their raft, they couldn't escape this trap. As they vanished around the next turn, another panicked woman emerged from the opposite side, thrown off a raft. Constantly screaming, she desperately grabbed a support to stay on her feet, but slipped, nearly catapulting over the extremely low railings. Like the previous victims, she hoped to find shelter, but instead, a wave knocked her and the next raft away. Miraculously, one woman was saved on a turn but the child, who fell off earlier, suffered head injuries. Visitors generally trust that these attractions prioritize safety, but the president of one of the oldest U.S. water parks confirmed that injuries, even deaths on rides, unfortunately aren't uncommon. Every amusement park, every water park has incidents and injuries, and sometimes tragically so. It's just part of the industry. Is the industry this cynical? or are visitors to blame for their misfortunes? 
The answers led a British couple from Manchester, Jamie Norman and Vicki Holbrook, to personally investigate in 2014. They finally took their long-awaited vacation to the Spanish amusement center, Aqualandia, known for having one of the world's tallest slides called Vertigo. Visitors plunged from a height of 33 meters, reaching speeds of 97 kilometers per hour after experiencing a terrifying moment when a hatch opens beneath their feet. This scared off many, but not Jamie Norman. After descending twice, he went for vertigo again. As the operator began the countdown, showing Jamie a thumbs up and pressing the hatch release, a strange sound, unheard before, caught his attention a second before the drop. He panicked that something was wrong, but there was nothing he could do. Falling into the tube, Jamie felt something tearing at his leg skin. Then he slammed his hands and later his face against the partially open hatch. Rolling into the pool, now tinted red with blood, chaos ensued. People scattered, and Norman, in pain, cried for help. His shocked wife, Vicky, stared at her husband's unrecognizable, bloodied face, resembling a gruesome mask. Later, a rescuer approached Norman and escorted him to the local trauma center. The couple begged for an ambulance, but the park staff hesitated. Instead, they treated Norman's wounds, handed him a few free tickets to the zoo, and escorted them out of the water park as he screamed in pain, frightening other visitors. On the way out, the injured man was shocked to see Vertigo operating as if nothing had happened, with kids waiting in line. For the rest of the vacation, Vicky tended to the wounded Norman. When they returned to Britain, Norman ended up in the hospital. His wounds slowly healed, and the family hoped to return to normal life soon. But their trials were just beginning. Due to facial scars, Norman started to think he was no longer attractive to Vicky. Unable to forget the slide incident, he became distant and irritable, leading to arguments. Eventually, after a year, the situation deteriorated so much that the couple raising two children had to separate. Norman sought psychological help to try to rebuild what was once a happy life with Vicky. But how did Aqualandia's staff react to this tragedy? They claimed to conduct daily checks on all their rides and insisted they would never open a slide if it were dangerous or faulty. So, according to the park administration, Jamie Norman was to blame for Vertigo's hatch not opening. Unfortunately, such behavior in theme parks is not uncommon, even in the world-famous Disneyland. In October of 2019, Emma McGinnis and her family were celebrating her 13th birthday at Disney's Typhoon Lagoon Water Park in Florida. The tallest and wildest ride there was the Humunga Cowabunga. You start by getting into a closed tube at a height of 65 meters, which is like a five-story building. Then, picking up speed at almost 65 kilometers per hour, you shoot out into an open trough. Emma McGinnis couldn't pass up such a thrill. Like all the ride-goers, she was told to go down with crossed ankles to avoid getting hurt during the descent. Emma followed the attendant's instructions and eagerly plunged into the dark tube angled at 60 degrees. She sped through it faster and faster until landing in a horizontal trough. But right after the stop, Emma felt excruciating pain in her stomach. When she stood up, she saw that she was bleeding heavily. She couldn't understand what was happening, but felt so awful that she had to call an ambulance. Initially, Emma was taken to the nearest hospital, then had to be transported to another one where a gynecology specialist was available. It turned out that during the slide, Emma's leg lifted slightly despite being crossed. And when she hit the standing water below at breakneck speed, her swimsuit turned into a wedge that literally cut into her body. The pressure from the fabric and water was so powerful that Emma suffered serious, partially irreversible damage to her reproductive and internal organs. After a lengthy rehabilitation, she sued Disney, accusing them of negligence and seeking compensation. Later, Emma's lawyers discovered that many women were actually getting injured on the Humunga Cowabunga. Moreover, the water park supposedly knew that crossed ankles didn't protect visitors on the ride, especially women, but chose to ignore this fact. But come on, these theme parks can't allow people on dangerous rides knowingly, or can they? In 2014, when in the suburbs of Melbourne, Australia, the Peninsula Aquatic Recreation Center opened, 
Locals were thrilled you could swim, do water aerobics, hit the gym, and most importantly, relax with your kids. The first ones to do so were the center staff with their families at a closed event on August 28th. Their attention was drawn to the star attraction, the Aquasphere. It's a closed slide where four passengers ride on one raft, passing through three five-meter spheres and navigating turns at a 90-degree angle. Another green slide was designed for single or double rafts and had several circular turns. So, at the first party in the Aqua Center, people had fun going down the slides. That was until an unfortunate incident happened. One of the visitors hit his head on the inside of the tunnel. The injury wasn't too serious, so it was quickly brushed off. However, very soon, the situation happened again. This time, the victim's condition turned out to be much more severe. A bloodied visitor and an ambulance surely spoiled the grand opening of the Peninsula Center. Both visitors suffered brain injuries, with other victims reported later on. For instance, a woman named Becky Morsetto ended up with a massive bruise on her knee and back pain. Another visitor suffered facial injuries, and all this happened on a new slide that cost almost $50 million to build and was supposed to open at the center. Nevertheless, the park administration had to close the slide for a whopping 10 months. After some minor adjustments, it was presented to visitors once again, and almost immediately, another unfortunate incident occurred. A father decided to ride the aquasphere with his two sons. They excitedly took their place on the inflatable raft and dove into the darkness of the slide. However, things went completely off plan. The younger boy, around seven years old, was thrown out of the raft inside the slide, rolling down without any protection. A father and an older boy were the first to fall out of the aquasphere. The worried man picked up his son, realizing his arm was broken. He looked around for the younger child and, in horror, realized he was nowhere to be found. Suddenly, the boy fell out of the tube. His entire body was covered in scratches and bruises, and he had lost consciousness. Other visitors were scared, and the desperate father tried to revive his son. The boy regained consciousness only after 15 minutes and was immediately taken to the hospital. The attraction was closed again and completely rebuilt in 2016, leaving only one sphere. But for this, several visitors had to get injured. Yet even this isn't the worst thing that can happen in water parks. In 2013, in Ontario, Canada, locals started buzzing about calypso theme water park. Not that they talked about it because of how good it was, but rather because 20 people took the park to court over injuries they got there. So, in the summer of 2012, the bobsled crew unleashed two boats onto the track simultaneously. They smashed into each other, and a guy named Marek Strelik got tossed out of his seat, smacking his head on a concrete fence. A month later, in the wave pool at Calypso Palace, a glitch in the electrical system messed up some gadgets, leading to a major chlorine dump into the water. Fifteen people had to be rushed to the hospital due to chemical poisoning. But the real nightmare for the park visitors was the steamer ride. It's like a colossal whirlwind that spins you around really fast and then spits you out through a tube into a pool. Just in one summer month of 2011, 10 people got injured on the steamer. During that season, a couple named Sophie St. Jacques and Mark Bertrand visited the park. The pair excitedly took their spots on the steamer's raft, zoomed down, and started swirling in this giant vortex. They did a few spins before getting close to the exit hole. That's when Sophie felt water completely engulfing her, heard a loud bang, and blacked out. The raft they were on flipped while entering the tube and threw the passengers into the pool. Sophie woke up in that very pool a moment later. She couldn't get up due to the horrific pain in her neck, so she crawled to the edge. Finally, she managed to grab onto the railing with one hand and hold her neck with the other, burning like it was on fire. Sophie screamed about it to the park staff, and all they demanded was for her to get out of the pool and not ruin the experience for other visitors. It wasn't until it became obvious that Sophie was seriously injured that they called an ambulance. As it turned out, she broke her neck and had to go through extensive rehab. Her husband Mark even wrote about the tragic situation on a travel website to warn other visitors. Moreover, it turned out that another person broke their back the same month and the tragedies on the steamer kept happening. Eventually, Calypso Water Park was found guilty of safety violations and fined 400 grand. 
only a hundred of which went as compensation to all the known victims. But if you think it affected the park's operation, or at least the dangerous ride, you're dead wrong. Calypso keeps running, managing to injure, I mean, welcome, of course, around 22,000 people a day. You'd think it couldn't get any worse, but oh boy, you're in for a surprise. In Vernon, New Jersey, there's a water park folks call the Accident Park, or Traction Park. Yeah, you heard it right. They're talking about spine-pulling action. Initially, the place was known as Action Park and first opened its doors back in 1978. But what went down there was more like a horror flick than an amusement park. They rolled out one of the gnarliest water slides in the world, breaking all the rules of physics, the Cannonball Loop. It was this narrow tube ending in a full vertical loop, and instead of landing in a pool, visitors essentially hit a wet carpet. Rumor has it that the dummies they used for ride tests were returning without limbs from the trial rides. The slide was so terrifying that no one wanted to ride it, so the park administration bribed its employees. They offered a hundred bucks per ride, which would be three times that now. Yet the workers saw what this slide did to visitors and weren't having it. In just a month, in 1985, dozens of people got injured. Broken noses, head hits, passing out, limbs snapping, and getting stuck in the loop. On top of that, sand and grime piled up at the bottom, literally scraping people's skin on their backs, stomachs, or chests, depending on how they were entering the loop. Once, a visitor fell out with significant lacerations on their body. They shut the slide down to determine the injury cause, and it turned out that it was someone else's teeth stuck in the tube's inner walls. While riding the loop, visitors experienced a G-force of up to nine Gs. To put it in perspective, astronauts on Apollo 16 returning to Earth faced about seven Gs. The Cannonball Loop ceased operations a month after opening, but reopened a few times during the park's existence. Despite its wild nature, this ride didn't claim lives like the tidal wave pool. This 76 by 30 meter water pit could hold from 500 to 1,000 people at once. The waves in it reached one meter in height and went on for 20 minutes straight, way too long and too high for such an attraction. It claimed the life of a 15 year old boy in 1982 and later two more young guys suffered the same fate. Hence, it got the nickname Grave Pool. Another deadly spot in Action Park was the Alpine Slide causing over 40 serious injuries. In 1980, a guy got thrown from the ride, hit his head, and died. Rumor has it that Action Park had to buy extra ambulances for the local hospital because so many people got injured there. It's considered the most dangerous water park in America of all time, yet it kept running for 20 years. Then it got sold, upgraded, and surprise, surprise, Action Park got a new life under a different name. And though there's no global statistic, the odds of getting hurt seem higher on water slides than on any dry land rides in an amusement park. Often they lack safety belts, and the high speed turns what looks like soft and safe water into concrete. So just to be on the safe side, check out the history of the ride you're about to hop on, or subscribe to our channel and hit that like button to discover terrifying places without risking your life.